Lee, the supervisor of elections, was very honest with me. She says she recognizes there is a problem and has been working on it. Police have made it clear that the public is not in danger. This is an isolated, isolated incident. In fact, they actually know who the shooter is thanks to good witnesses that have come forward and a victim who is cooperating. Now, close to 80 items were discovered inside a Lehigh Acres home, and 25 of those have been recovered and returned to the rightful owners. Hey guys, this is Stephanie Tinoco with Fox 4. I'm out in Lehigh today. Um, there is a homicide investigation. We are on Adeline Avenue. Uh, there's been deputies here since earlier this morning. Lately, I asked them, what was your response time? They said zero because they had actually an officer here at the mall. Well, Amy, I've been seeing a lot more foot traffic since the last time we spoke. A lot of excitement here. A lot of excitement. I guess they're refreshed from that AC that they're enjoying inside their cars. There have been reports of dead fish washing ashore. Now, from the very beginning, Chief Lewis has made it clear this was an absolute accident. However, friends and family are devastated by this loss. Now, earlier today, I got to speak to two of Sean's mentors who tell me that moments ago, and as you can see behind me, there is actually a team here tearing down what's left of this event. Now, just to give you some perspective, I saw this gentleman a while back, and I think he's dressed really interestingly. Sir, you kind of caught my attention with your outfit here. Oh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you're sporting today. Well, Patrick and Amy, this is quite a party right outside here. We have supporters enjoying a meal. After war and destruction, displaced families in Aleppo, Syria are beginning to return home. In your corners, Rochelle Davis was there. She has more on what these Métis had to say about the event. And suspected members of the notorious Lake Boys in Fort Myers will have a court appearance Monday morning. Following breaking news out of Fort Myers tonight, police investigating a shooting near a popular after school program and sent one person to the hospital this afternoon. Police say the victim was shot right near the corner of Paul Doe Street and Edison Avenue, and then he ran to the Stars Complex, which was filled with kids. For in your corner, Stephanie Tinoco live at the scene tonight. She has all the details for us. Stephanie? Well, Patrick and Amy, the uh, police have made it clear that the public is not in danger. This is an isolated, isolated incident. In fact, they actually know who the shooter is thanks to good witnesses that have come forward and a victim who is cooperating. Now, I do want to go ahead and show you some of that video from earlier today that we shot. I want to be clear, this did not happen at the Stars Complex. Police say that a man was shot with non-life-threatening injuries, but it did start at a house on the corner of Edison and Paldo Street. The victim actually ran to the Stars Complex where there were about 130 children inside at the time, simply asking for help, and that's when officers responded. Take a listen. Police officers actually said, hey, I'm being flagged down about a possible shooting, made contact with the victim, and he was able to provide us all the information. Well, I was sitting on the front porch, and all I heard was gunshots, and, they, and it was very, very loud. When I got to the corner, I seen a bike down there, so I walked down there, a bicycle laying down, and uh, some shades look like somebody might have got that bike and ran. Now you just heard from a, from a woman who heard those gun, that gunshot earlier today. Now uh, Fort Myers police did say they did reroute a few of those bus stops earlier just as a precaution for children's safety. However, they did mention again they wanted to emphasize this is an isolated incident. The public is not at harm and it's just a matter of time before the shooter gets caught. Live in Fort Myers, Stephanie Tinoco, Fox 4, in your corner. This turnout is exactly what the League of Women Voters wanted to see for early voting. It makes the league feel very good that people are getting out and voting. Just to give you an idea, there are more than 400,000 registered voters in Lee County. Close to 44% are registered Republican, about 28% Democrat, snowbirds included. We're from Chicago. But how many of those registered voters may be voting twice in this upcoming election? Clara Ann Graham, president of the league, tells me we may never know. I have had discussions with some snowbirds who say very proudly that they voted up north and then they came down and voted down here. Now, to what degree this is happening, I have no idea. So I asked the Lee County Supervisor of Elections, Sharon Harrington. Is there any way to make sure they're not voting where they live and then voting down here? Well, actually, that is an issue. Uh, we've tried to um, address it. Harrington tells me there's no database to make sure voters aren't registered in two or more states. 
I think if all the states get a central do voter database and we can put them all together, we may be able to catch people that might be voting twice, but we have no way to check it. So what you're saying is if someone moves from Colorado, votes for president in Colorado, and they can also vote here in Florida? If they have Lee County, if they're declaring their Lee County here, their legal residence, we, we'd have to give them a ballot, but they could also be declaring Colorado their legal residence because we have no way to check it. So they could be voting for a president twice? Possibly. Now, I did reach out to the Department of State to find out if there is such a program. I'm told that the state of Florida hasn't been able to participate in a cross-state uh, checking system because of privacy laws here in the Sunshine State. Reporting live in Fort Myers, Stephanie Tinoco, Fox 4, in your corner. Homicides have been making headlines across southwest Florida. It has been exactly one week since gunfire erupted at a Fort Myers nightclub. Keeping an eye on crime is a priority for realtor Frank Erhart. He says it can make or break a sale for his clients. Certainly safety is a big, big concern. So how big is the concern in each of Southwest Florida's communities? I asked Frank to take a look at this interactive crime map on the Lee County Sheriff's Office website. So far I haven't seen a homicide in the last 30 days in here. We know just from covering them, there have been many more homicides than that. So I asked him to look at previous months. So yeah, one, one since February of 2000, 2016. That didn't sound right either. So I checked the numbers by contacting each agency individually. These are their totals in the last year. The Lee County Sheriff's Office has 12 homicide cases. Eight have been solved. Charlotte County Sheriff's Office and Punta Gorda Police each has one, both solved. Collier County Sheriff has three, two solved. Fort Myers police have the most unsolved cases out of 13 homicides. Only four have been solved. Cape Coral police list five, all solved. But remember, the website only lists one homicide in the Cape over that period of time. Do you say this might be a little misleading? Um, if in fact there are others that are out there that uh, that aren't reflected here, because I know even like on that June 5th incident, uh, there were probably well, there was the one there. There was actually the one down on uh, this corner as well, which isn't reflected here for some, some reason. And until it is, he says he's not putting all his faith in the numbers on the website. I would have expected that this would have been, would have been updated at least somewhat regularly. Well, every day they get up, they uh, dress like this, they put on their desk, the gun, they go out and, and they uh, face everybody's fears for them. We would rather be in the middle with the bad guys with the guns than have the public have to suffer that. Hundreds of officers work to protect Lee County daily. It's, it's a passion. It's something that comes from deep within. I, I, don't, I can't explain it. I've been doing it for nearly 20 years. But tensions have been high between the public and officers across the country. Arrest people and, and ruin people's days. That's not what it's about. A report by the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund shows a dramatic increase in officer deaths across the nation in 2016. The officer is going to be on high alert because he doesn't know if you're going to be that bad guy with a gun that's going to try to kill him. Causes of death vary, but just this weekend, four officers were shot nationwide, including this Sanibel police officer who was conducting a routine traffic stop before a bullet pierced his shoulder. It's a pretty tragic event. Um, I mean, it, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to me. It can happen to anybody I work with. So how do officers protecting our communities in Southwest Florida face their everyday duties in today's tense climate? What we'll do is we'll mentally prepare and we'll expect the worst so that if it does happen, we're prepared for it. Agencies I spoke with in Southwest Florida say their relationships are better than most cities around the country. We have a great relationship with our citizens. You know, our community relations is getting better. But each department is still fighting misconceptions about the job. We come out here every day just trying to help people out. Definitely. We're not looking to make people's lives harder. Because behind the vest and the badge, there's a human life that matters too. The, the number of good law-abiding citizens that support the police far outnumber those that want to hurt us. 
And as long as those numbers continue to stay as strong as they are, and as long as we continue to have the support of our community, then, you know, it, it will be okay. Stephanie Tinoco, Fox 4, in your corner.